Welcome to day one of the Secrets to Getting Clients Summit. Starting off with Tracy Phillips, and we're so excited she's here. I'm Nancy. I'm co-founder of Eucochia, and I don't know which direction, but for me, it's this direction. Harley. Hi, everyone. We're so glad that you're here. It's We're so excited to start this event. It's really about serving you guys and, and really getting into some real conversations that can't always be had in the public eyes on social media about what really needs to happen to make your business, um, you know, the success that you want it to be. Um, and like Nancy said, today we are starting off with the incredible, I wouldn't want it any other way, Tracy Phillips. Oh, shit. <laughs> Tracy <laughs> is an Emmy nominated video producer. She's made the transition from behind the scenes to on camera. So she knows all of the struggles about getting comfortable on camera. And she is a visibility, visibility and video confidence coach. So welcome, Tracy. Thank you so much. You're so very welcome. We're so the way this is going to work, we're doing a watch party. We've already interviewed Tracy. We're going to start that interview. And there's some things that we want to expand on. Um, basically, we want to get into the nitty gritty how to's. So Nancy will be you ready to start the, the interview yeah. and then we can uh, chime in when necessary. And you guys, any questions you have? Yeah, anything. Well, I was going to say, can they kind of like just interrupt and be like, wait yeah. a minute, I need clarity. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh my gosh, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we want this right. to be like, well, this is the idea here is not to get like vague general concepts, but to actually walk away and saying like, wait a second, I can actually freaking do this. Here's well, how can. I do this. You can. Yeah. yeah. So in the chat, if there's any questions, please let us know and you can raise your hand as well. Yep. I think you all have the power to unmute yourselves. So awesome. So we're going to get this started and let me go share my screen. Let's go see what screen you get. Funny if I was wearing this on that day. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, dying. I will let you I know. I think that I might be wearing this because I own two shirts that have color. I'm a New Yorker and everything else is. Oh, good. Black. I'm not. Okay. Woo. You're not. And we just jumped on in. So it's at a random start point. So let's go see. You don't need, you don't need a lot of tech. You don't you need, need a lot of tech. tech. Put the tech away. Put the no, tech but away. it's, there's a lot of excuses around tech. There's a lot of searching around tech. There's a lot of. In the video world, there's just a lot of watching instead of doing. And what I can say is you are never going to get good at video, watching videos about how to make videos. You yeah. have to make videos. And then like, luckily, if you're in Eucochia, you get feedback from a video pro and then you get better and then you get better and then you get better. And that's where the confidence comes from. Amazing. And it's so true. You can't, it, nothing's ever really worked particularly well just by watching it. You actually tend to have to do it. Yeah. yeah the breakthrough is in the action. That's mm -hmm. right. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I like that. So Nancy, hit, hit her with your favorite question, Nancy. My favorite, favorite question. Okay. So this nervous. is the deep, dark secrets of Tracy Phillips. We so might have Tracy, to fast forward through this one. Tell us <laughs> what is the one thing, I mean, literally that no one, not your husband, not your kid, not your pet, <laughs> No, your mother doesn't know. <laughs> What's the one thing no one knows about you that you're going to just reveal right now in the Uco Gym? Right here. Oh my gosh, I really yeah. do wish I had had a little bit of time to think about this because as I've said before, there are so many. What is the one thing? I am going to go to Amsterdam. Take me to Amsterdam. I mean, there was only one other person that knows about this because she was with me on the trip, but I went to, for a work trip to Amsterdam and I wanted to do all the things. And <laughs> One of the things is the red light district. And I yeah. was, you know, early twenties. And so <laughs> I, I think what nobody knew is that I went to go see, I can't remember her name, but there was a banana involved and, <laughs> and something else. And I just remember saying out loud, like, where was she keeping the banana? <laughs> and so nobody knows that I've ever like, and it's not that I went, lots of people go, I enjoyed it. I did. I'm cringing. I enjoyed, Nancy. I enjoyed I'm cringing my right experience with, I wish I could remember. I'm going to call her like Anna the banana because it was just so fantastic. I love it. I love it. I just want to jump in here guys and tell you that I could not be more fascinated by this story. And it's taking all my powers not to explore that deeper because I know that that's not why we're here. I feel like but we're going to jump. We'll jump right over that, Nancy. We don't need to <laughs> Also, I'm in it. My, my husband, it. who is standing right outside the doors, was like, "What?" He's like, "I'm not one of the two people that know." <laughs> now he does. Now he does. But no, here we go. Okay, so I love this. So we have a a deep, dark, dirty secret that we're proud of, <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> 
let's shift for a moment. We're going to, you know, not only are we here today to help um, our viewers learn more about how to get clients, but we're also here to educate people who might be newer to the space about what's going on out there. And a lot of it can be dishonest, right? And so I, what I, we'd love to know from you is what your current pet peeve about the current coaching industry is, if you had to choose one. It's cookie cutter. It's cook, it's, it's, it's putting everybody into the same box that if it just because it worked for this person, it's also going to work for this person because we are humans mm. and we learn differently. We show up differently. It is really important to show up. Of course, the video lady is going to say that, right? But you don't all have to show up. One of my favorite things to say is you don't have to show up every day, everywhere, right? Doing everything. And because like, listen, you don't have to dance. You don't want to dance. I don't dance. I dance. I love dancing. I will not dance <laughs> on TikTok or anywhere else because it just feels awkward, right? And so my my big pet peeve about it's really this online industry is that this one thing, there's just you're just one thing away from making it big, right? And it's such right. a lie because uh, you know, the you want that fast button, make money in my sleep. I want to, you know, fill my calendar just like this. And it can happen, mm -hmm. but there's years before that. And so if there's anything I want to instill, because again, like I consider myself a video coach and I had to learn how to be online. And I had to like, I went through every rabbit hole like that everybody else went through. Um, and I would love to, in you coaching, it's why I love you coaching. It. It's like, oh, don't, you don't have, you don't have to do that. You don't have to um, fall down that rabbit hole and then like try and dig your way back up. And so I really would say my biggest pet peeve is just this like cookie cutter, one size fits all. You got you got it. Just mm -hmm. everybody do this one thing. Because if that were true, then everybody would be making it. And it's not true. Look, I'm jumping in for a question for you. So Ditto. You, <laughs> so you said in that segment that you want to, that people don't need to do all the things all the time. Yeah. And that, uh, by the way, yay. And yeah. apparently yeah. we don't have to dance. So, you know, I- Unless you I, want to. Well, am I the only one who's currently singing that song in their head? Yeah. It is so, just me. Okay, yeah. just no, me. Like, now I am. Thank you. I just give it to everyone. So what I'm, you're saying though, you don't have to do it every day. Is there a number of times a week or anything that you know that people should be doing or a structure for them to be so doing? It depends on the platform. And so that's some of the stuff we would dive into in Yukochi is like, where are your people? Like the very first thing you need to know is you need to dial in your audience. And, and my LinkedIn audience is very, 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 very different than my, um, my Facebook audience. They're, I'm actually selling two totally different things over there. And so I speak to them differently. I show it up differently. There's, there's the magic formula of, you know, commitment plus clarity plus consistency. That's how you get co uh, confidence. And so you have to, you have to show up consistently, right? And so if that just, if that means once a week, I say once a week, but you want to make sure you're consistent. And there's so many different reasons why, uh, even if no one's on there with you, mm -hmm. you still need to show up consistently. And this has to do with claiming your stage and showing up as an authority and letting people know you have something to offer. Um, and too many times people will come to me and say, uh, you know, I did, I went live. And then they like, didn't, and then they went live again and they're like, video doesn't work. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Of course it works because they're thinking metrics or thinking something else. Like, you know, I can tell you it works because I went live every single week for, you know, a couple of years and it, and it wasn't hard and it wasn't, I mean, in the very beginning, yeah, back sweat, you know, I was worried. I was, I, everything scripted up and then it gets easier and easier and easier. And again, that's why like those, the commitment, the clarity and the consistency, that's how you get confidence. That's how you get good on video and everybody can be good on video because good on video simply means you're able to share your gold. You're able to share your light that so that someone says, I need that. Okay. And so I'm sorry. I just want to go back for a second. So like there's nobody in the room yeah. and I'm feeling awkward AF, right? Like, so how like, do I manage that a little bit and how long do I need to go on for? So can we get inappropriate for a moment? I actually would like to start there, apparently. Okay, well, I think we did with, with Anne <laughs> the Banana. I feel like we skipped right over there. So we're going right to inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. 
So I have a simile that I like to, because this is again, one of those like video gurus, people telling you you have to have a certain length of video, it's BS. And so I have a simile and it's like this, your videos are like a mini skirt. They need to be long enough to cover the essentials and short enough to keep me interested. I have tried to find a more appropriate simile. There <laughs> isn't one, it's memorable. People still come up to me and they're like mini skirt. And <laughs> what all that means is you can have a very long five minute video or a very short five minute video, depending on your content, depending on how dialed into your audience, depending right? Like, so there's a lot of other factors. So in the beginning, simply show up for as long as it takes you to get a point across, right? And so it, like, so if that's just a couple minutes, good on you. Cause what you're actually doing, especially like on Facebook or LinkedIn or any, like even TikTok, you're creating an authority library so mm -hmm. that people see you and wanna keep watching. So when people see you online, the first thing they do is go to either your Facebook or your website. And so if you have this authority library that they can binge through, you are the authority to them. They, they're like, oh, this is the expert because they're brave enough to make videos. Everybody thinks that everybody's making videos and only 10%, this is an amazing statistic, only 10% of businesses are actually using it effectively. Really? So, yes, that. lots of people are making videos, but they're making those long five minute videos, right? Like they have, you have to make, um, you have to make effective videos. And again, it doesn't have to be hard. Like, and again, I, so, so Nancy, just for a second to dive, dive in is just because I'm the video lady, like Emmy nominated, that type of thing. Like I was terrified to put myself in front of the camera. Yeah. I made up every excuse why not to do it. I would like, so I, I have been sitting exactly where everybody is, which I think makes me an excellent coach because mm -hmm. I not only have a great video experience, but I deeply understand what it's like to feel really weird, awkward, and like an amateur when you don't like being an amateur at anything. And, you know, like, so, but, but again, I'm also proof that if you stick with it and you keep going, you can get better at it and you will get better at it and you'll stop overthinking it. I mean, that that's truthfully like it has, yeah, you just kind of get over yourself. I want to jump in here because the learning curve is much shorter than you think. And I oh, yeah. think that it's a physiological mm -hmm. thing yep. because it's the brain when you are so nervous, when you're first going live, it's actually you're in fight or flight. Okay. Right. So the brain is telling you you're in danger. Your brain is telling you that the live is a lion about to eat you. Right. Yep. And then once you do it and you don't get eaten, the brain says, Oh, okay. Like, this is not a danger. This is okay. And you actually get some nice comments from people and no one makes fun of you. And your people, friends from high school don't see it and care about it. And all of those things that you were scared about don't happen. So the learning curve, you get comfortable much quicker than you would think. Don't you agree, yeah. Tracy? I, to I totally agree. And I talk about the expectation gap, which is, you know, this is, and I don't know if I talk about it in here, but this is where you see people showing up on video and they look professional and they look like they're totally put together and that they're not having like a panic attack before like their, mm -hmm. their video and they're here and you're here a beginner. And what I say is you have to embrace your suck because like that gap is much shorter, but until you actually show up, you're never going to get here because the only way to get better is to actually start making videos and making mistakes and figuring out your own flow. And so Mary, I do see your question. I do, I do recommend people start on one platform because what happens is it's exhausting. So the only, the only caveat to that really is if you're doing TikTok videos and you can then make that TikTok into a real and a short without any additional work, great. Then you get to try three. But if then you're trying to manage three platforms, stop it. So it depends on where your audience is, right? And so it's going to be different. I have, you know, I'll be 50 next year. And I know like everybody's like, yes, you can do, I mean, next year, next month, and you can do TikTok videos. Um, older people are doing TikTok videos. And it's true. I tried it, but it was too much work to try and like, work with the algorithm and do those types of things. And so it wasn't right for me and my business, but that is not to say that anybody here like could be like, but TikToks, you just never know. And so, but I would highly recommend starting with one, getting good, getting comfortable, and then you can move on to others and test and see what works. I love great that. Question, really, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. And also really smart, like to just do focus on one, yeah. unless it's easy to Correct. use it on multiples. If it's not easy, it's hard enough just to do one. Like don't, yeah. Don't fool yourself over this. I yeah. love that. I love that. Let's keep on going. You guys ready? 
what amazing thing will I say next? <laughs> kind of, we're both, we're all like, hmm. <laughs> I don't know, according to all the ads I see up online, everyone is making it and you do make it all within the next week. All like, face lies. Yeah. I love that. I love that because, you know, Nancy and I, um, we, when we worked at a larger coaching company, um, you know, the claims that were made that you can have this success this quickly, this easily, right? Because every 15 months, pretty much so guaranteed as long as you do the work. And, and some people, you know, there were a handful of people that did have success, but they had success because of what they brought with them. Right. They had months or years of experience. They had already become comfortable on video. They already had, you know, an email list, right? And so I love that, you know, to really highlight the fact that there's not one answer for everyone. You know, there's many different strategies and you get to figure out what yep. your journey is going to be about. I love that, Tracy. I love that. No. I'll stay. I'll stay. Should I stay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so... Now, I like to go on journeys, right? So I want you to now get into your time machine. Okay. We're going to go back. We're going to go back to when you just started. You woke up and you're like, I am going to be a video coach. But here's the good news. You came with all the knowledge that you have now. Yeah. What are you going to tell that, Tracy, if you can go back and tell her? What would be the one thing you'd tell yourself? Okay. And here's, a, it is, um, and not because I'm plugging video, but it is about video. <laughs> <laughs> it just turn, <laughs> turn the damn camera on sooner because my, yeah. you know, here I am the video coach and, and just a really brief background. I have 20 years of video experience, but I was in documentaries and I was behind the camera. Mm -hmm. I was calling the shots. I was not in front of the camera and being in front of the camera. I get it. I get it. Like it, it you make you feel awkward. And so many people coming into the coaching world have had successful offline jobs or careers or things like that. And that's why video gets so frustrating because you're like, I don't want to be an amateur. I did what I do. I just want to do it. And that's how I came into it. You know, I didn't start on the online world, you know, when I was 20, I was 41. Right. And so I had to put myself out there at a, as a 41 year old woman. Wait, okay. I might've been 42. I'm just doing some really <laughs> quick math here. Since I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but it, so I, I, I waited too long. I waited too long. I, I did a lot of like, oh, I just have to learn this thing. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to do this. I, I got to get this. Like, so really it's putting yourself out there because when you show up on video, there's two things that happen. One, you're going to get good at video, right? You're, you can then you'll get better and you'll get better and you will. No one, you're not going to be a video rock star right out of the gate. Nobody is, but you'll get better. The second is you're creating what I call an authority library. And so simply by showing up, simply by being the person who puts their face up there, you are the expert. Mm -hmm. And all that takes is claiming your stake, saying like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And I waited way too long. And the story behind that is slightly hilarious because again, in my forties, I had a lot of experience. I had an Emmy nomination. I had like, did I know video? Yeah. A little bit about video. <laughs> Content, a little bit about showing up, right? Like those types of things. Uh, and I watched someone who was a former weather girl. I don't know why I say it in air quotes. I say, <laughs> it just pisses me off, but like, she was I'm sorry, let's hold it. Weather girl. Weather girl. <laughs> weather girl. Uh, but she was putting out a video course mm. and her authority, like how, was that she was on video. And I thought, but she's teaching like video stuff. And I was just like, no, 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 no. Just because you like say the weather doesn't make you qualified to help people. But here's all that is, is a story. She was very qualified. There was nothing wrong with this 20 something year old. Mm -hmm. like a, right. She, yeah. she was able to like, she probably did a great job. What bothered me was that she put herself out there so quickly that uh, she was she putting her course out there, that she was like, you know, again, you're like, you're sticking your claim and saying I'm here. And mm -hmm. Uh, I say it in a jokey way, but it's not a joke. The only time I make money is when I make an offer. So if oh, I'm yeah. not out there making offers, if I don't show up visibly wow. and say, I have something for you, which is why, again, like I'm going to go back to why I love you, you coaches, because one of the things that happens when you're new or you're new to the online space is like you're cobbling stuff together. Yes. Right. And so in you coaching, it's like, Oh, social media. Oh, emails. Oh, video. You have to make that little O sound too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh we have a video of Tracy in the platform. Just going. Okay, we're gonna do that. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. You're having it. But, it, but it's true. Like, so it, it's, it's what's missing in the coaching world is mm-hmm. a hub. It's a hub where you can have access to everybody. And then, you know, Nancy and Harley, you have such experience so you can help them. Like, here's your, here's your coaching path. Here's mm-hmm. what feels good to you. Now let's get you with the right people. And so, yeah, that was a really, really long answer to it. But the, the truth is like showing up on video is some of the, one of the things I wish I had done earlier as a video person. Right. Yeah. But as a coach. And what I love about what you said was that people don't want to be amateurs. Oh. Right? And I think that's such a big obstacle that you don't want to suck. And the first time you do something, you're going to suck. Mm-hmm. Right. And no one wants to step into that vulnerable, uncomfortable place, especially if you have a lot of mastery in your life or a lot of accomplishments in your life. But you have to be willing to be new at something and learn. And I love, I love that you said that. But that mastery yeah. also didn't happen overnight. And of so it's, it a, it's a strange little like vortex where people just yeah. simply want to show up. And I always joke around that there's no magic pill. Like there's no yeah. magic pill. You take it at night and you're like, in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. I'm looking awesome on camera. Like I wish, I wish there was like that. I actually believe there is, and I think people refer to it as cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I do I like being inappropriate. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. But I feel like I don't know. actually be good at it. You might just think you're good at it, right? There you go. There There's you a go. whole other there layer to that there, Nancy. I feel like we should not diver. Okay, I gotta pause here because I'm very amused by myself and I can see like guys. But the point is that like, I think that Tracy's saying to us and what she's reiterating is, and what Harley said is you, you have to work to improve. You can't just think to improve. You can't just read to improve, but you actually have to do the process to improve. And it's such a small concept, right? Like it's not like a big idea, but it's the action behind it and taking that vulnerability and standing there and actually saying, I'm going to put myself out in front of everyone. And I'm going to not be great in front of everyone because what I have to say and what I'm going to share will eventually be strong enough that I'm going to what is it, master the suck. Like <laughs> I think it might be embrace the suck. Yeah, embrace embrace the suck. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like what you said was like hundred percent on point. And it's about becoming visible and it's hard, it's vulnerable to be out there like that. So, you know, when people are doing it, I commend you. I commend it. And the coke joke was pretty funny. You're really funny. <laughs> for all me. Don't get me. All right, I'm going to reel us in. Yeah. I'm going to reel us in, in like, ladies. But a lot of it is, a lot of it, when we talk about like, you know, I, I always tell people you're, you're going to have to embrace the sock. And mm-hmm. I don't know if we have time, I've talked about the expectation gap. And what happens yes. when you are an expert yeah, in something that. is, here's you're looking at you know nancy on video tracy on video harley on video and they seem like super comfortable and really like happy to you know talk about their offers and then here you are and i call this the expectation gap and it's not as big as you think it is but you're gonna have to suck a little bit to move on over right and then you'll meet in the middle and that is really the only way you have to make a commitment to say like i i am gonna do this i am gonna suck and it's it's much shorter Yes. And you think it is. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So um, I want to get back to one of the reasons people are here, which is getting clients. And so I want to ask you, what has been your favorite, most successful, most prolific way of getting clients yourself? Can you share that with us? Yeah. And as for me, I built my entire email list that has thousands and thousands of people using live video. Mm-hmm. And live video feels so scary. But I guarantee if you ask anybody who has ever paid me any amount of money for anything, they're like, I saw one of your live videos, (laughs) right? Because that live video, like I talk about, then becomes an archive video. And so I love live video. Here's why. It is very forgiving. Mm. Unlike pre-recorded videos, which are fine. They're fine. But pre-recorded videos, you have to keep your eye contact. You have to, like, it's a lot more work to look good on a pre-recorded video. Whereas on live, you can have notes. You can say like, I'm going to check my notes. Uh, The point isn't to have people on there with you, but you're also getting the practice you need. But that is how I really, I use live video. I did not use ads. I didn't do, I used it organically. And I was showing up now when I go live, I simulcast, you know, to LinkedIn, to YouTube, to Facebook. But I was on Facebook going live once a week. And so there's, it's consistency and being consistent. 
And I would have people emailing me uh, if I missed a Thursday. I used to go live on Thursdays because they'd say, uh, "We are, aren't you supposed to be live?" And I was like, "Oh, I didn't like." I love that they were anticipating me going live. And you can say, you know, it's all changed a little bit. The landscape has changed. And it has, and it is, but again, showing up live, now it's going on the other end of it, coming back up because, oh, there's so many people going live. Oh, there's so many people, but now they're not. Now it's little short videos and short form things. So when people are showing up live, and again, live video, we're not talking about going live for 30 minutes. I'm talking about going live for five, seven, 10. You'll be surprised again, as you get good at it, but people love live video and you're interacting with people. And so, yeah, live video was like, that was my, and still is my secret weapon for just bringing new people into my world and letting them know again, like, Hey, here I am. This is what I do. Yeah. You know, I remember when I, Oh, let me, before we do that, I have some questions, Harley, do you have any questions too? Yeah. I, you know, so I love your answer which is live video. And there, you know, we've spoken a lot already about getting the courage and doing the practice and embracing the suck. But as far as getting clients going goes, you know, how we transition from live video into offer into client acquisition. Can you speak a little bit about that process and how live video serves it? Well, I mean, live video, again, creating that, that library is great, but also you're thinking about, I teach something called the content wheel and, and it's all nurture content. There are things that people need to hear and you don't know what that is per person, right? You can know your audience and have that dialed in, but I will have people who have been watching me for a while and I, whatever it is I say, that's what they hear. And so you're using a live video as an opportunity to bring people into your world and then they come onto your list and then you nurture them to the sale. And so the live video really acts as that kind of top of funnel. The first thing they make, you're a stranger, but maybe they see you or someone shares it and says like, oh, this is that video lady I was talking about. Or if you have a niche as a coach, somebody might say like, oh, Mary does this. You know, and it's simply because you're showing up Mm -hmm. and saying, I do this. And so it becomes leads, it becomes clients, because again, you are establishing yourself as the expert. And each of those videos, which again, is something we'll work on in, in you coach is like, so not cookie cutter. What Mary's talking about could be very, very different than what Katie's talking about, right? Like it's not the same nurture. Yeah. You can't like these things where it's like, just do this as a post, just do this as a post. No that doesn't work because your audiences might be vastly different. And so it's really dialing in, knowing your audience and, and, and again, not taking too much time to say, and if this is intriguing to you, or if this has really gotten, you know, if this, then go ahead and do this. Like your call to action is the most important thing in everything you do is to actually have one and only one, but to drive people somewhere. Because video, just to have video is video vomit, right? Like there's no reason for it. You want to have a reason to be going live and to be driving people. Did I answer the question, Harley, of like- it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, one follow-up. So do you have a call to action on every video that you make? So sometimes it depends. It depends. Like what, so again, because we're not cookie cutter. If I'm in the launch, when I was launching programs, mm -hmm. if I'm launching something, I'm sending them to that webinar or to whatever it is that I want them to go to. If I'm in a nurture sequence, which again, there's a runway to a launch. That's one type of video. There's nurture content eight weeks before that. The call to action may simply be for them to engage, not like, not heart, but I ask them one very specific thing or send them somewhere else, right? And so that is the call to action really matters, but you don't want to leave people hanging. That's what I see people's videos that I'm like, and now what do I do? And they're like, okay, see you next week. And you're like, okay, but I'm ready to do something right now. And that's what I don't want people leaving because they will go find whatever they need. Right somewhere else. And so, yeah, so the call to action just depends on where you are. And again, if it's a coach and they need to hop on a curiosity call or something with you, if that is always your call to action, then almost every live I would do would be something like, um, you know, if you want to see how we would work together, if we would get along then go ahead and book a call. <laughs> so I would, I would like, do not pass go. Tell right. people you have something. So you, to so you that's what I was going to wonder. So you, to get them onto your email list, is that what you would do is just say, 
So if you want to learn more, if you want to stay in touch with me, just jump in on nurture. My yeah. If I, like I had a course called live video launch, but if I was like going into launch and I wanted them to sign up for the wait list or, Oh, like I had, what well, I do pop-up classes or a webinar ahead of time, then I would drive them there to sign up. And I'm like, I'm going to go way into deep this, like on the webinar. And obviously the webinar is part of my funnel mm -hmm. to the course. Right. So you really have to, and again, this is, you really have to think through what do I want people to do? What is the point of this video? What is the goal? And I love when I get students are like, it never occurred to me to have a video goal. I want clients. Yes. Okay, great. Let's start there. That's the hub. I like, okay, how, what do you need to talk about in order to get them into your world? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Like really understanding your audience deeply is so important because, um, early on, you know, as the video lady, I don't like teaching. I will teach the lighting and the framing and like all of the, but like tech stuff is not my wheelhouse content, comfortable, like confidence, stuff like that. That is my wheelhouse. Um, but guess what people were searching for or like seven years ago, lighting and this, and where should I show? So I, for a while I ignored it. Cause I'm like, I will not do that, but that is what they wanted. And so I realized I had to like bring people on, you know, yeah, I'm sure everybody has heard like, you know, bring them, get the, get them what they, they want and teach them what they need. Yeah. Right. And that is true. It's true because, but that's, that's understanding your audience. And so what I started actually having the conversation is, is, you know, tech was a huge obstacle and there is no tech like other than like, so the obstacle is you in your head because you can, you Google any tech question you have even seven years ago, and you would have gotten a lot of information about tech. What you're afraid of is putting yourself out there. But I used to say, I was like, all you need is your finger and a phone. And I know that sounds dirty. I like to say it a lot um, <laughs> because, but it, that's all you really need tech wise, right? You can get anywhere and do anything, but that's not really what's holding people back. So I wanted to dig into like, what's really holding you back. And yeah. people are like, no, no, no. I just want to know, like, how do I show up in the frame? So I started kind of changing my message to, okay, here's the bare bones, but back dragging basics. Mm -hmm. Now that we have that out of the way and you're still not using video, let's dig a little deeper. Why aren't you doing it? How can I support you? Right? So then it made it clear to them, well, I'm not really going to be like coming over to their house and setting up their studio. <laughs> I can help them figure out what they should be talking about, where they should be showing up, how they should be showing up. So, which is, you know, what I do. Got it. And I see Mary had asked a question. Um, I don't know if you see it in the- My new best friend, Mary, do you get seen only in your followers on live videos as a platform shows? Depends on the platform. Um, yeah. And so like, but again, so in Facebook, I always tell people like, if you are using Facebook for business, your profile page is a business mm -hmm. and you need to get as many connections and people as humanly possible. So if you don't want your family and people to see that, then you can block them. There's ways to stay safe on there, but you need to use Facebook as a business platform. And yes, you should have a business page if you ever plan on doing ads, but if you're just starting out. And so if you go to my profile, um, it's not like me and my daughter and my dog and my husband, it's like creator of this, right? Like video pro. Right? Why would my friends care about that? Well, I'll tell you also, it's hilarious because I get inquiries every, every week of like, Hey, my friend said you did this thing with videos because mm -hmm. they, they're friends, friends of friends. So that's how you connect. And so like on Facebook, that's how it works on LinkedIn, it's connections and it's your job to keep making connections. Right. So, so there is no field of dreams marketing. I hate to like let anybody who thinks that there is, I'm very, very sorry. Just because you make a video or build a funnel or do anything does not mean that people are going to come into it. It is your job. And it's a big one to drive eyeballs to whatever it is you're offering. And this can be simple or it can be extremely complex, right? But like start simple, start with Facebook, <laughs> start like making connections, making friends of friends. And yes, you're going to get the trolls and you're going to get the people who you friend. And two seconds later, they're like, Hey, I was looking at your site and you definitely need help with, and you just, you know, whatever, I'll give you all a video. You can put my video into there, which tells them to get out of your inbox. Right? <laughs> it's going to happen. But in business that happens, it's called mm -hmm. cold calling in yeah. business. Like if you had a brick and mortar, people are like soliciting your business. Like, so, so 
it's your business. And again, like I want really, I want people to start thinking of themselves as, you know, a shareholder and CEO of business, not an employee. You've said that before. It's it's really really powerful. I didn't make it up. I really wish I could take credit for it, but like Mike, take it, take it. Mike Mikkelwitz, Michaelwitz. I never say his name right. He's a great author. He was like um, Profit First and all those books. I love it. But yeah, but he but he said like you, you start, you know, if you start as an employee, you will always be an employee of your your business. I love so, this. Yeah, yeah. This is like gold because I think understanding a lot more about the details of what's really involved and that it's not just post a video and, you know, magically yeah, people show it's, up. It's like, you have yeah. to take the call to action and say, here's what I want you to do. You know, like, and I, boom, boom, boom. can I just say Like, I just came back from a live event where I was a speaker and there was another speaker there and he's an engineer and he's brilliant. And his whole platform is for engineers because he wants them to be holistically, like to take care of themselves on a lot of levels and not just have their value in their brain, which is a very big engineering problem. And he's brilliant, he works for Tesla. And he had hired a video pro to put him on TikTok. He was posting three TikTok videos a day. One of his videos got like 400,000 views, but it's a lot of work, right? Like that's a lot of work. And I pulled him aside, engineer, and I was like, I'm a numbers person. How many people signed up for a a curiosity call from 400,000 views? Oh, why his TikTok video was something about a Rubik's cube. It had nothing to do with what he was offering. And so this is when I talk about video vomit and stuff like that. Like, yes, you can make videos about your dog and other things and blah, blah, and get lots of views on it. But is it driving people to what you want them to do? And this is what we think through. And you coach is like, what is that customer journey? What do they need to see and do next? So I'm working with him now on videos and we did a content wheel on showing up on LinkedIn. Guess where all the engineers are? They're, They're not on LinkedIn. TikTok. <laughs> no, but even if they are on TikTok, when he was on there, he wasn't talking about what he did. Right. It was completely right. disconnected. And I love it. Like the video guy he hired, like super sweet, really, really like nice, what has the best intention in his twenties, but it's tricks and trends. I don't teach tricks and trends. Right. I like to say tricks are for hookers. I don't do that. And I think that's so important. It all goes back to the banana. (laughs) So I think it's so important that um, you talk about where, you know, one of the first things is really doing the research to find out where your audience is. Yeah. You know, where, who your ideal client is and where are they spending their time on social media so that you know where to commit. And can I add, who do you want them to be? Mm. Yeah. Because you know what I don't want? I don't want freebie Fran coming into my world because freebie Fran is always going to be seeking freebies. Right. I want, so again, when we talk about audiences, I love LinkedIn for what I do because the people who hire me from LinkedIn don't even ask me how much it costs. Mm. They are looking to hire the professional. I am the professional. I have videos and all those things to like, you know, tell them that I'm an expert at this. And so they just want to hire the best person at what they do. And that is the difference between putting so much out there for free and doing all of this stuff. And and some of that is necessary depending on where you are in your journey, but it's it's really valuable audience-wise to say, what do I want my audience? What do I want them to be? Not who are they? I love that. That is powerful. You have the opportunity to say like, I want my dreamy. I'm in a, a group where we call them the dreamy. I want my dreamy to do this. I have an offer for video test magicals. I hop on calls. And at a $6,500 price tag, when people are like, we get off and they're like, oh, I forgot to ask how much it was. That's my dreamy. Yeah. Right. That that doesn't bother. Like they don't care. I'm taking something off their plate that they've been worried about for a long time. That, that's what I want. And it's yeah. okay to say like, I want someone like that. Right. Right. I love that. That's, I love that because it's reframing. Sorry, I went off a little bit, but it's important. It's important to think about. It's yeah. huge because like, it's not thinking about like, who am I working with is who do I want to work with? Correct. Yeah. So Correct. on point with that love, love, yeah. love, because oftentimes we create our marketing around who we know is going to be there and not like the person that yeah. we really, truly want, because somehow like, do we not believe they're going to be there? Right. Like, are there not enough of them? I don't know, but that's powerful. Yeah. Cause you get yeah. to choose who you work with. You really do. If you come to it with that intention, of, you know, and you, and you take the time to identify who that is, then you can actually connect with them. 
Um, and I also so like when it comes to videos and live videos, where we talk about bringing leads in, there's there's another thing that happens there is then you're also identified as the expert to other people. So when I mean I'm asked as a podcast guest or to teach something or invited into to you coach you, like I don't know Nancy or Harley. They found me. Yes, so we did. Say that video works. They were like, oh, she's like who, she's who I need, right? And well, so a great test. That's a completely true correct. fact. We yeah. didn't know each other, like, nope. you know, got on and interviewed. And that's the thing is you are creating opportunities for yourself when you show up on video that may be beyond what you're even thinking for coaching or anything like that. You can become a speaker. You can become, you know, a guest speaker and other people's. I do that all the time. Um, you know, and it's simply because I have this library and they're like, oh, I like her. She seems fun, right? Like she seems as I did one for Bonjuro and Eric, who was the host of it. He's like, I have never really been on a webinar quite like that before. And I wasn't sure what he meant, but I got lots. So that I call that the $10,000 webinar. I did it for free, but I sold five $2,000 spots. Boom. So is that worth my 45 minutes? Yep. Yes. Yeah. My biggest takeaways <laughs> yes, here, like, yes. My <laughs> biggest takeaways here is to, you know, to show up, to build that library, that video library, to build that authority, right? And to have your call to action and have an intention of where your people, when you're creating that live video, where you want them to go. What's the next step? What is the next thing? What is, yeah. What is the next In shaping thing? them into your client. Right. Yeah. And again, it can be as simple. When I started out in business, I mean, I had like a PayPal link and like, like a Google form, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and it's it great. worked, it worked until I had enough money to hire someone to make it better and different. And that's like how I grew my business. I mean, I made tons of mistakes that I don't want anybody here to make. That's why you're all joining you coach. Yeah. So you don't do that, but, but you can start simply. And that's why, like, I think when we joke about like one funnel away, one this away, one, yeah. no, you don't even need that at first. You need somewhere that they can go so that they can hire you. And then you'll dial in and fine tune everything else. Amazing. So you guys are going to learn. I know uh, she mentioned you coach you a couple of times and you guys, it, for some of you guys are part of it. Some of you guys aren't. So just so you know, because we didn't really tell you very much about it. It's a holistic business Academy where we have 10 plus experts who teach different components that they're an expert in. So it's I'll not be there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Tracy's here. So it's like you work with somebody like Tracy, where she has a $2,000 program and she's in the Ucochia world and it's all access to everything. So just so you guys know what that's about. Um, but yeah, so you guys, look, we're going to hit the play button. Let's go do this. Just click for me that live video is the way to go because I had all of these videos stockpiled and I had to edit them. Oh. And so, and it, you know, and it was like, oh. and, and I mean, finally, I was like, no, I what I just heard was it clicked because she was like, I don't want to edit. I don't want to edit these videos. <laughs> no, hey. no, it's a real, it's a real problem, you know? And I mean, I could have, my husband's an editor, but that's another story. That's a that's a whole other problem. But um, but a whole other exactly about that. right. Yeah, my but then I was like, if I go live, I show up, I serve, I engage, and then it's done. It's yeah. over. I don't have to go back and you know massage it. So I I couldn't agree more with you about the live video. I think it's it's really powerful. And there's another there's there's something else. Um, that a lot of people don't know, and I talk about a lot. Your audience actually prefers live video. Mm. And we'll stay four times longer on a live video as opposed to, um, and I think it was Wise Owl who did a study on this. Um, and so that's great. But here's where it gets really interesting, even if it's a replay. Mm. How the heck would they know? So even if it's a live replay, again, we're creating that like authority library and they're huh. live of you on Facebook. People know there's an energy to live video. And again, at this point, I fancy myself pretty good on video. But yeah. I cannot create what we're doing here now. If you were like, okay, now go give me that information in a pre-recorded video, it is very different. And so there is an energy to live there and people know. And so authenticity. It's authenticity. And it is also real and raw and human. People don't want highly produced. Like right. they don't connect with highly produced because then they feel like they have to be like highly produced. Right. And that's the whole thing is, and the trends for 2022 and moving on is more user generated, raw. That's why, you know, I had to finally give it up where I was like, okay, you can do vertical videos. 
Right. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> As a video pro, like you're like, no, no, it's meant to be no, no, HD, like right, like it's okay, you can do them vertically. Um, and now it's acceptable. But like yeah. a couple years ago, it was not was not like, pro versus not pro. And so, yeah, but here's the thing now it's expected and I'm fine with it, but it's also a matter of how easy is that for you to show up on your phone, just you know, just go live. And so and and if your audience prefers it even if it's a replay, it's easier for you. That's why I said, like, I don't know why people won't do it. I do know why. It's because they they think it's terrifying. And it is the very first time for the first minute. And then it's not anymore. Yeah, you just kind of ease into it. I mean, I, I agree with that 100%. And I cannot wait. Like, we're doing the, when we do the live replay to dive into this even further. Like, yeah. I'm so excited about that. We have one last question for you, and then we're going to wrap up, Tracy. Yep. Please. So we would love to know why you, one of our first, joined Ducotio. Why did you join? Not the cherry. Um, I, th I thought <laughs> I'd bring it back around to Anna Bear. Um, <laughs> I joined because you are, you are, um, you're really like filling a gap in the coaching world, in the online world of creating a place where people can come and get everything that they need in order to have a successful business. And so it is really, you know, you hear all of everything. It's so crowded. It's so crowded. It's so bad. It is, but there's so much room and space for all of us. Mm -hmm. As long as you stay focused and you're on plan, what happens is again, it's the cobbling or the like, huh? Ah! Oh, squirrel, squirrel. So instead of like doing this and running away and coming back and saying it didn't work, you're in a place where so many of us have tried lots of different things and we know what works. And so now you're being brought into a world of experts where you don't have to guess it works and now just choose the path or you are helping them choose the path that's going to get them there the fastest. So with support and, you know, it's just such a great loving space. Oh, so. yeah. We're <laughs> I double odd. Okay, okay, so like just you guys know, we're not um, really going to talk too much about Ecotia, but uh, Tracy is generously doing something amazing that is sick. And it is a bonus that we're pulling out there. And um, I think if I'm not mistaken, Tracy, you've never done this bonus before for. No, not, not, no. <laughs> no, this is a full on like an actual thing she sells offer that she's. Yeah giving to people within the Ugochi world. I don't know if you want to share with them what that is. Sure, yeah, it's a home studio makeover. So what that means is we get on Zoom and I come into your space and we will find the best lighting space, framing, depending on what you have available to you, right? Like I'm not going to come in like I'm the video person. This is my set, right? I just got off of a call and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your virtual background. I'm like, it's not virtual. It's my background, right? Like, but this is not doable for everybody. And it doesn't matter, right? Like I'm the video person, so I want to show up a certain way, but we can, I can find, I mean, I did it with Nancy. I've done it. Like, it's more about how you're showing up in the frame. And it's like 20 minutes. I say, if HGTV and MTV had a baby, it'd be, it'd be the home studio makeover. Cause we come together. We're getting right. I can make suggestions based on your budget, your space, all of that. So it's really fun. It's fun for me. And then you get to know me like on a personal level, which is really nice. So that's uh, just, just so you guys know, that's something that Tracy is offering. We're very excited. And we'll tell you guys more about all of that uh, throughout the summit. You guys will have an opportunity to join in. Um, but for right now, we just are so grateful that you're here, Tracy. We are so excited Thanks. to have you as part of Ucochia. Um, she teaches video, video confidence, and she's outstanding, as we all can tell. I'm kind of amazing. She's kind of, <laughs> kind of a big deal. She's kind of a big deal. I wanted, with gold, you know. I wanted to see just if, is the, are there any last questions anybody yeah. have any last and questions Nancy, like if, if you loved me you'd take my face down just from that like oh yeah let's I will never show. do that okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does there, anybody have it like like I'm here uh you coach you or not like you showed up today so does yeah. anybody have like a, a video question or launching question or anything I mean I have you know a lot of experience I feel like Marsha wants to ask me something. I feel like that too. I think that you guys can unmute yourselves if I'm not mistaken. If you don't have the power, just let me know. And uh, Mary wants to know how they can follow you. Yeah, so Video Script Success, which I'm in a rebrand and I'm changing, but right now the name of my company is Video Script Success and it's one word. And so I'm, you know, I'm on Instagram and Facebook 
on TikTok, but it's being taken down because it's not working for me. Uh, but and on LinkedIn, but so LinkedIn and Facebook are where I'm most active. Or you can go to videoscriptsuccess.com. Um, yeah. So that yeah, follow me. But but again, so something interesting, and I don't even know if Nancy and Harley know this is like I don't teach classes anymore. The oh no, place, I didn't know. Yeah. So I'm doing. I have something called the Test of Magical, and that's my big offer that I've been working on. But the only way to get my video coaching currently is through Ucoachia. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. I knew that. Yeah, because I, I, really I was transitioning away from the launching of courses. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's exclusive, Shanda. That's right. Yeah. Yes, so and, exactly. and that's a big, it's a big deal because for seven years, I've always been like available and running the courses and you could yep. just get the video. But right now, the only place that you can get my video coaching, um, you know, and again, just to give you an idea, like my one-on-one -on -one coaching packages are like $5,000 for three months. Right. So it's not available. You can't get it. But like I'm in Ucochia giving the same information away um, simply because price. I yeah. want a hub where mm -hmm. there are people right? like so you are collecting people for me and I love to teach. I love to do it. So, yeah, yeah well, I did Her not hear first. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> that was an exclusive from an exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask if anything comes up later. Uh, you can ask in the Facebook group. You can also just email us. We're ucochi at gmail.com. Anything that comes up, we are here to help. And that's kind of basically what you coach is all about. So we want you guys to get the support you need and the help you need. So make sure you reach out. Tomorrow, just so you guys know what's coming up, we have Amy, who is a leadership expert and has built multiple six-figure plus businesses and she's going to walk us through exactly what it takes to kind of create that and how she gets the clients for those. So it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. 